if i'm using a mic for example if i'm doing a simple video production like this my mic is connected to my computer and when i'm connecting my mic to my computer i will not connect it to this green one i have to connect it to the pink one This is a typical desktop computer. It has various buttons and ports on the front and back of the computer case. We're going to go over some of the most common ones, which you'll find on most desktop computers. Let's start with the front of the case. Most desktop computers have the power button on the front, although some all-in-one computers put it on the back behind the screen. Your computer will probably have an optical disk drive also known as a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. This has either a tray or a slot where you can insert a CD, DVD, or even a Blu-ray disc if it's a newer computer. If you have blank CD-R or DVD-R discs, you can write or burn data onto them. For convenience, your computer may have audio ports and USB ports on the front. That makes it easier to plug in your phone headphones, or USB flash drive. You can also find audio and USB ports on the back of the computer. You'll usually have several USB ports so you can plug in all of the peripherals that you need. The power socket is also found on the back, and this is where you'll connect the power cord. To connect your computer to the internet, you can use an ethernet cable to connect your ethernet port to your modem or router. And this port looks a lot like a telephone port, but it's a little bit wider. You'll use your computer's monitor port to connect the monitor. There are many different types of monitor ports. This computer has a VGA port, but your computer may have a different kind, such as DVI or HDMI. Expansion slots allow you to upgrade your computer by adding expansion cards. For example, you can add a graphics card to get better gaming performance. Many computers use PS2 ports to connect the mouse and keyboard. The mouse port is usually green and the keyboard port is usually purple. But if you have a USB mouse and keyboard, then you won't need to use these ports. Finally, some computers have a serial port and a parallel port for connecting to older peripherals such as printers but today most devices use the USB ports instead. So those are the main types of buttons and ports that you'll find on a desktop computer. Your computer may have the ports in different places and it may even have a different type of port, but chances are most of these basic parts are there. All right, good morning. I welcome you back to class and we want to continue our studies on computer ports, cables and connectors. We learned that computer ports are the connection points or interfaces between a computer and other external or sometimes internal devices. We learned that a connector is a part of a cable that is plugged into a port to connect one device to another. Most connectors are either male or female. A male connector is sometimes referred to as a plug. So any connector with an exposed pin is a plug. And a female connector is called a jack. So this here is a jack because it contains holes in which a pin can be inserted. The last time we looked at the USB port and we learned that USB stands for universal serial bars. And USB has become a popular standard for connecting several devices. It connects our keyboards, our mouse, it connects our printers, it connects 
several peripherals and right now the new USB-C even connects video this is a logo of USB anytime you see this logo this is USB logo and we know that this is a USB port this is how it looks like and this is the USB connector type A or USB A we learned that USB A started from 1.0 move to 2.0 the most common ones around are 2.0 as in the common ones on older machines so all the USBs you find here are all 2.0 but we have a new type called the 3.0 or new version we have a new version called the 3.0 and if you look inside the 3.0 most of the time this barrier within it where the pins are is usually colored in blue just to indicate that it is version 3.0 we have 3.1 which is just like the 3.0 but in some ways better we learned that apart from type a which we know very very well and almost all devices that are connecting to computers work with the type a so the usb port on the computer is the type a female and it is this connector that connects to the computer on the other side we have several connectors or several types that may be connected to other devices for example we have the type b that is connected to our printers we have the this is a type b mail we have the mini b we have the micro b the micro b is very popular today and is usually used for uh, smartphones and other mobile devices this is the micro b this is a micro b connector and this is what is connected to uh, mobile devices and over here goes into the computer so the end that goes into the computer is usually the type a that is the end that goes into the computer over here this is the mini b the mini b this used to be popular but the micro has taken over when it started we had a lot of devices using the mini b but today most devices are using the micro b So this is a mini B. It used to be very popular, but the micro B has taken over. And this is mini A. It looks like the mini B as well. Today, the committee that controls USB connectors has decided to do away with the type A and B. And so they have created a new type called type c and this type c is better in every way it is modern it is advanced it is simpler it is faster it is better in every way so with the type c this is how it looks like they have designed it in a way that it doesn't matter how you turn it this end can go into the computer this end can go into the device it will work this end can go into the computer, this end can go into the device, it will also work. When you are plugging it into the computer, you can turn it upside down, downside up, whatever, it will still work. Because with the Type A, because of how it is designed, 
if you don't turn it the right way it will not be able to connect or you will not be able to insert it because this thing here blocks it the inner barrier here where the pins are located will block it and so it will not fit in the port now if you look at this port very well you can see that there's space at the bottom so when you are inserting this you have to make sure the space is at the top before it will you can insert it before you can insert it so because of this problem the usb-c has been created we also looked at our display ports and connectors for display we learned that we have vga port and vga is very popular and has been around since 1987 has been around for so many many years several ports have come and gone but vga is still around nevertheless vga has been discontinued it is no longer being made and so there are other ports that have taken over the vga one of them is what we have here dvi dvi was intended to replace vga to make it better and digital but dvi couldn't stand the test of time so dvi also went out of the system and the modern hdmi came in so this hdmi port is what is very popular in the world today in this year 2021 hdmi is what you find everywhere and hdmi is working really well and is helping us to get high quality display hdmi stands for high definition multimedia interface and it is the most popular and the best port and connector out there in the world we also have another port for display which is actually called display port this display port is also very good just that it is not as popular as the hdmi when you look at display port this is the logo of display port you should be able to recognize it it is also for display so when you see a computer that doesn't have hdmi does not have dvi does not have vga but only has display ports don't ask anyone where you should connect your monitor don't ask the question where can i connect my monitor you are supposed to know because any of these ports do the same work they are all used to connect to monitors any of them so if you find only vga you should know that this will help you connect to your monitor if you find only dvi you should know the same if you find hdmi you should know that it is for display and if you find a display port you have to connect to it all right today we are going to move to what is called the ethernet port the ethernet port the ethernet port and this is how the ethernet port looks like this port right here is also very popular has been around so many many years and is still widely used and is still the best the ethernet port i didn't call this the internet port it is called the ethernet port it is not the internet port it is what ethernet port keep that in mind in computer networking we have several terms that sound alike for example we have intranet extranet internet internet work internet working internet work there are several terms you find that sound alike in computer networking 
now what you see here is not internet port but what ethernet port the ethernet port also known as a LAN port because of the type of network it is used to connect it is used to connect to local area networks LAN port or LAN so it is also known as the LAN port it is a type of port that works to connect a computer with many types of network devices and hardware via a cable it is also used for cable internet connections let me read it again ethernet port also known as LAN port is a type of port that works to connect a computer with many types of network devices and hardware via a cable it is also used for cable internet connections all right now whenever you see this port there are a number of things you can connect it to and i want you to pay attention here number one this is used to connect to a local area network it is used to connect to what a local area network a local area network simply means a network within a building if you have studied anything about networking you will know that networking means connecting multiple computers together for the purpose of resource sharing so multiple computers can be connected together now when you when you look behind a desktop computer you are going to find a port here this particular port is very popular and it has a special use without this port you cannot connect a desktop to the world this is a port that makes a difference without this port you cannot connect your desktop to any network now when we talk about local area networking we are not talking about internet internet is a type of network on its own you can choose to connect to the internet but when it comes to networking it simply means connecting multiple computers together and so companies create their own local networks the internet is a global network but you can create a local network in your company so that all the computers can communicate with each other in that company this is how it is done we usually have a server and in the middle of the server we have a networking device like a switch this particular switch depending on the number of ports you want will be connected to the server when this switch is connected to the server all the computers in the office will come and connect to the switch all the computers will connect to the switch and the switch will be connected to the server when that happens we'll have a design like this all computers connecting to the switch and the switch to the server so when that happens we have established a local network when we talk about local networks what it means is that from this computer you can access this computer all the files on this computer can be accessed from here all the files from this computer can be accessed from here that is the purpose of networking if there's a printer in the company all these computers can print through the same printer you don't have to provide printers for each machine we just need one printer in the company and because there is a network all the computers can print through that printer and so we have what is called a local network 
a local network may have internet within it or not once a local network has been set up in a company all the computers can communicate among themselves it does not mean that you have internet when you set up a local network it does not mean you have internet if you want internet you can bring in internet all right so what the ethernet port does is to connect your computer to a local network this is what is done in almost every company every company that uses it has a local network because it is a company and they have their internal affairs their internal businesses they need to be able to connect to themselves so in companies this is done in all companies that is why this port is very very important it is used for networking networking can also be done between just two computers networking can be done between just two computers that type of network is called a peer-to-peer -peer network so if you have an ethernet cable you can connect two computers together if you want two computers to communicate you don't need any other hardware all you need is an ethernet cable with the ethernet cable you connect one end to one computer the other end to, to the other computer and you have established a network it's called a peer-to-peer -peer network between two computers from computer a you can access computer b that is called a peer-to-peer -peer network just between two computers and so with just the cable a network can be set up nevertheless if you need to connect more than two computers certain hardware will come in like the switch a switch may have several ports depending on the size of the network if there are several computers in the company you need to have several ports to be able to connect all of them so this is a, a switch with about 64 ports so this can connect 64 computers we have switches that can connect 128 256 sometimes multiple switches are used to connect a large company and behind this switch you can see that we have the ethernet port several of them so each one will be connected to a computer every computer will have one connection so when 64 computers connect to this switch guess what will happen one cable can connect this switch to the server when that is done it means all the 65 computers are now connected and what that is called a network this network is not the internet it's a simple offline local network the internet started like this just that this is in a small building but the internet is not in a small building the internet is in the whole world so when it comes to the internet there are several devices and several connections and several cables that make the internet possible the internet started in the year 1968 as a u.s military project what the united states wanted to do was to build a network that is very intelligent so that in the time of war they will be able to communicate with all their stations around the world and so they created a network called the ARPANET ARPANET A-R-P-A-N-E-T the ARPANET this was after the second world war the United States was planning their defense in case of another war and so they built a very sophisticated network in a way that even if a nuclear bomb goes off anywhere the network will still exist so the network is very intelligent and it is routed through several channels 
after the ARPANET was developed and there was no war, companies started using it. Universities started using it. And a time came, they realized that this thing can help the world. And so it became public. It became public and now we can all use it. And now it is called the internet. The internet is a sophisticated network made up of several networking devices like switches, routers, satellites, fiber optic cables, several devices. So in computer networking, there are several devices that make network possible. We have routers, we have switches, we have hubs, we have access points, we have modems, and we have several cables. Now, in computer networking, you are going to see this port all the time. This port is very, very common in networking. If you look at any networking gadget, you are going to find this port. So like this, this thing here, this is a, a hub and this particular hub here, or it's a small switch. Hubs and switches are the same. They do the same work. They have a slight difference, but they do the same work. All right. So you can see this ethernet port. This port is very popular in all networking devices. So like I told you before, computers will connect to a switch and will connect to a server and the network will be set up. Sometimes there are some computers that do not use cable. Now all that we are talking about, we are talking about cable networks. Some networks do not, some computers or some devices do not have cables like your smartphone. We don't have anywhere to plug the Ethernet port, the Ethernet cable. The Ethernet cable is the most popular cable in computer networking. Your smartphone doesn't have anywhere and so they have created a wireless technology that we call Wi-Fi. And this Wi-Fi technology helps you to connect through the air. And to be able to do that, there is a gadget we use. This gadget here is called an access point, AP. This AP here will be connected to the network. So if we have a local network, you can connect your AP, your access point, to your switch or your router using the same ethernet cable. That is why the AP has one port. The reason why it has one port is that it has to be connected to the local network. Once it's connected to the lo local network, this AP will start broadcasting the network through the air. And any device within the range, because it has a range of about 100 meters, any device within the range will be able to detect the network and connect to the network wirelessly. So we have several wireless technologies and routers can help you to do that work. And um, routers that do wireless connections have APs within them. So it is a router and it's an access point at the same time. Networking is very interesting. Now, when it comes to networking, like I said, this is a port. Again, this port is used to connect to a local network, networking devices or networking hardware, such as a router. If you have a router, this is what you connect it to. If you have a switch, this is what you use to connect to the switch. And if you need an internet connection, the internet connection may be coming through a router. You still have to connect from here to the router. So what I want to tell you is that the Ethernet port is used to connect to local networks and also used to connect to networking hardware and the Internet. You can use this port to connect to the Internet. You can use it to connect to networking hardware because there are several networking devices and they can all be used to connect to this port. 
and it can also be used for a local network this is how the cable looks like and this is a connector of the cable it looks like a telephone cable but it has eight pins telephone cables have just four pins so they are smaller this has eight pins and this is a very important technology without which your computer will work alone without this port a computer is called a standalone computer a standalone computer is a computer that works alone cannot join any network or has not joined any network but if you want your computer to be able to do more then you have to connect your computer to a network or to the internet any computer that is connected to the internet or a network or the internet has unlimited resources that computer can do unlimited things can do amazing things if you are a computer and you are not connected to the internet even though you are a computer you cannot do much if you want your computer to have unlimited resources make use of this port once you connect to this port you will join the global network the Ethernet port is used to connect to local networks or local area networks, networking hardware, and the internet. When you check all these networking hardware, if you get a chance to look behind it, you will see that they all have Ethernet ports. All these networking gadgets, they all have Ethernet ports behind them. All of them, they all have Ethernet ports. Networking is fun. You can study about networking and you get a lot of knowledge. All right, so please, are you with me? I want us to identify the Ethernet port. So, when I point to a port, I want you to tell me the name. This one, what is it called? You can't see. You have to try and see. This port, what is it called? VGA port. This one, what is it called? HDMI. HDMI. Okay. This one, what is it called? And this one. And this one. And this one. The Ethernet port. Okay. All right, so this is an Ethernet port. All right, so this is an Ethernet port. Now, what I have here is a cable. And this cable, who can tell me the name of this cable? This cable is not called Internet cable. It's called the Ethernet cable. It's called the Ethernet cable. And this is a connector right here. With this connector, you'll be able to connect it to the Ethernet port. Now, this end here can connect to another computer. When I connect this to any other computer, laptop or desktop, I have created a network immediately. Because those two computers can start communicating among themselves. When I say can start communicating, it means you can access the second computer from the first computer. You just need to do some simple configurations and that will be possible. Apart from that, this end can be connected to a switch. When it's connected to a switch, what it means is that there are more machines, more computers, several computers connecting to the same switch. And the switch is connected to a server. And that creates a local area network, a large local area network. When you connect just two computers, we call that a peer-to-peer -peer connect network. A peer to peer network is that okay all right 
Now, what I'm holding here is a router. This is a router. And this router here, when you look at the back, when you look behind it, you can see two ports here. These two ports are all Ethernet ports. Now, this particular wireless router helps you to get internet access. So, it works with, uh, it is coming from an internet service provider. And what they do is that they allow you to insert a SIM. Once you insert a SIM here and you connect the power adapter and you turn this on, immediately it gets internet. If you have data bundle on the SIM, the internet comes here. When the internet comes here, this device is able to broadcast the internet wirelessly and it can connect to 32 computers. So, if I have internet and I want to share the internet to 32 devices, that is smartphones, tablets, laptops, and any other device that can receive Wi-Fi, I will just connect the same here and plug in the power. I can do that right now. And when I do that, the network will start broadcasting wirelessly. So, if you have any smartphone or any laptop, you can see a Wi-Fi network. You connect to it if you have the password. You connect to it and you start using the internet. So smaller offices that want to connect their devices through Wi-Fi will buy something like this. This is called a wireless router. Now, if you have a wireless router and your desktop cannot connect to Wi-Fi, what you can do is to get a cable. This Ethernet cable, once it is connected to the router and the computer, you don't need to set a password. You don't need to do any configuration. Just by connecting this cable to the router, the internet will come here immediately, instantly. Please, are you here? So if you check here, you see that I have one router up here and it's on. And I have several cables running through it and I've connected a number of computers over there. That router is just like this. So, so when we turn on the router and we turn on the computers, they, they get internet immediately. This particular router, when you go out, you see a cable connecting to a pole. So the internet is coming through a pole. I mean, a, a, a pole and a cable into the building. With this one, the internet comes through a SIM. So there are several types of internet services. So later we'll learn more about that. So that is it. So this particular port here does a lot of work. It does a lot of work. And it helps us in networking. Without this port, computer networking will not be possible. And network or networking is most effective through cable. Cable network is more stronger and reliable than wireless networks because wireless networks have several interferences and several um, disadvantages. For example, if you are not within range, you can't get it. If you are far from the range, your, your signal will be weak. You have to be closer to get a strong signal. And there are several things that can block a wireless network. There are several gadgets that can interfere with a signal. And sometimes certain walls can block the signal. Certain things can block the signal. So wireless can be strong at one point, weak at one point. Wireless is quite unstable. It does not mean wireless is not good. What I'm saying is that wireless has more disadvantages. If your wireless setup is good, you are going to enjoy it but when it comes to cable cable is very reliable cable is very reliable and when it comes to cable networking this one right here is the first cable network or the most popular cable we use for networking
is that okay so this is a simple lecture on computer networking and the ethernet ports all right okay now over here we see what is called a power socket this is where the power cable is connected to this is a power socket so now i'm very sure that you know what this is you know what this is right this is what the power socket what is this ethernet port one two three four five six what are they usb, USB. what is this HDMI. and what is this so this hdmi vga when you look behind this motherboard we call these ports the io ports io port means input output port i with me input output ports so these are the io ports all of them together are called io ports so over here when you see one two three four what are they usb right this one what is this ethernet port this one right here is called what vga port this one is called a parallel port this was our main printer port in the past before usb took over today printers are connected through usb but in the past we use a parallel port for printers serial ports could also connect to printers and other devices so this is a serial port this is a parallel port you should still remember their names serial port parallel port vga port ethernet port usb port and now these three here are called the audio ports you can find them here right please are you sure yes. okay so you can see them here and you can see them here most of the time they'll give you three audio ports because when it comes to audio we have three different ports and each port does something specific I with me most of the time the ports are also colored one is pink one is green and one is blue pink light green and light blue can you see them here pink light green and light blue can you see them okay so when it comes to audio usually you have these three let's start with a pink one the pink one is the microphone port microphone port the pink one is a what microphone. microphone port when we say microphone port what comes to your mind what comes to your mind when you hear microphone port microphone is used for recording so if you want to record audio use a microphone please are you here okay so this is my audio recorder please have you seen this when i click here record right now it is recording me so whatever i say is being recorded whatever i say is being recorded are you following all right let me stop recording so i've stopped recording you want to hear all right so this is for microphone this particular microphone is inbuilt into this notebook so i can just start recording but if you have an external microphone and you want to use it for recording you need to connect the microphone to your computer hello in your laptops we have small microphones built into them so without connecting an external microphone you can still do some simple recordings like i just did i follow in but if you want to connect a physical external microphone we use microphones when we are making videos when i'm making a video i will want to get audio so i need to have a microphone system 
that will connect my audio into my computer when we are recording music if you go to the music studio and you are recording your music that music being recorded through the microphones they use will be going to, into the computer so anytime you want to connect a microphone to a computer you need to use a red you know what a microphone is oh you don't get it you don't get it you don't get it <clears throat> let me show you a microphone okay all these are external microphones please have you seen these microphones people use haven't you seen someone using this mic before so maybe someone is recording a youtube video or he's recording a music or anything this is a microphone they use you can give this to your pc if you have this microphone you have to connect it to your computer that is if you want to record if you are not trying to record there's no need if you want to record your microphone needs to go to your pc all right like this i can connect this to my pc and use it today usb is doing a whole lot of things to the extent that there are some microphones that can have a usb connector but the ports on your pc for audio is this audio port so you can see your microphone here please i following all right now someone said you use microphone when you want someone to hear you we don't use microphones when we want people to hear us let me put it this way when you go to an event when you go for an event or when you go um, to any event and there, we have a large audience and someone wants to speak to all of them the person takes a microphone hmm? The person takes a microphone. Let me bring my mic. Wait, let me bring my mic. Now, you've seen something like this before. This particular mic is a very powerful mic. It's called a boom mic. And this boom mic is a very interesting one. What it does is that it can be pointed to an audio source. And it will capture that audio alone so usually when people are recording videos this is a mic on top like this so they'll put it on a stick yes and it will be on top like this so it can have some foams here to to block noise and other uh, unnecessary sounds now this particular mic when you point it at a location it's able to Pick the audio directly from what you are pointing at and cancel out external any other noise and so even in a party or an event where there is music going on everywhere music a journalist can interview someone this is a mic the journalist will use will give this to the person and there's music everywhere there's noise i mean serious noise everywhere someone can take this mic and speak and this mic will capture the audio and block all the music you only hear the music faint but whoever is speaking you hear the person so in studios and in video productions this mic is very very powerful it's called a boom mic we use this a lot now, if I'm doing a recording here for any uh, video uh, production or even for YouTube, I can connect this to my computer to get, get my audio. So whatever I'm recording, I record with audio. Now, you have to understand that in professional video production, we don't 
use audio from our cameras listen to me in professional video production we don't use audio from our cameras please are you with me because a camera audio picks a lot of surrounding sounds i hear so all the noise like this fan you see the noise from the fan in the video it will come in that's why i always tell them to off the fan why is it on please off it because of the noise apart from that all the small small noise around you they will all come in if someone sneezes if even the wind the, the noise of the wind will even spoil the recording so audio or, or audio from cameras are not always good and they are not used in professional video production we don't use them in every professional video production there is either a mic hanging on top a professional mic like this hanging on top or we have the we have our lapel this is our lapel mic either someone is wearing this for audio because in professional video production you can never rely on we don't use this at all we don't use camera mic we don't ever unless it's not a professional thing unless it's just a raw thing you just want to just here but in professional video production we always use something like this if you don't want to use this for people to see you can use this one and hang it here these are professional mics and what they do is that they will capture the audio because they are closer to the speaker they will capture the audio in high quality they will not capture the noise around they will capture the person and so when you hear that when you hear the audio you hear it in studio quality very clear very professional no noise and the audio is good sorry <coughs> when it comes to video production audio means a whole lot audio means a lot even if video is not very very quality audio quality is so important if your audio is poor no matter what your video will be bad you can open to youtube and listen to videos that are not professional when someone owns a video or is playing a video that is not professionally made you hear the room sound there's an echo in the room and you can see that they are using their cameras audio when you play that audio you can see that it looks like you can hear the room you can hear that this is so poor so in professional production we use this now this part here needs to be received by a computer so through this cable this will have to go into the computer now i cannot be sitting close to the computer so what we do is that we have a transmitter here that will receive the audio sorry we have a transmitter here that is connected to the computer this particular one will be placed somewhere here i'll just hang it somewhere to transmit the audio and this thing is a receiver it works with this so this will be close to where the recording is being done and this will be connected to the microphone so the audio can be captured into the computer if you are not using a computer for your recording any device you are using for your recording if it's an external recorder 
this will be record will be connected to it if it's any sound system you are using to record this will be connected to it and you'll get the audio so that also happens with the mic if i'm using the mic for example if i'm doing a simple video production like this my mic is connected to my computer and when i'm connecting my mic to my computer i will not connect it to this green one i have to connect it to the pink one or the red one and that is for recording so this is for inputs just, just like someone said this is audio input audio what so that is when you are sending audio into the computer when you are sending audio into the computer for recording okay so to what someone said if there's a large audience and you want to speak to the entire audience they give you a mic to speak to the audience so you go somewhere and you want to speak and everyone you want everyone to hear they'll give you a mic my question is is it a mic that is making all of them here okay so my question is is a microphone an input device or an output device is it input or output if it is input how come they will give you a mic and everyone will hear you Mm. For everyone to hear, it has to be output. Yes. Uh -huh. So the microphone is not what is making them hear. The microphone is receiving the input. It is a speaker that is making everybody hear. Because the speakers are connected everywhere. And wherever the mic is going, the audio is broadcasted out for, through the speakers. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so we don't use mic for people to hear. Uh, we use mic to record inputs into the system. All right, so this is for microphones. And um, that is it. So I said the red port is for what? Is a mic port. And the green one is the speaker port. The green one is what? The green one is a speaker port or audio out. If you want audio to come out of your computer, you use the speaker port, the green one. So what happens is that once you connect to this green one, sound can come out of the system. So whenever you have a speaker and you want to connect your speaker, where does the speaker connect to? This green port. Because it is the audio out or the speaker port. If you have a headphone and you want to hear music from your computer, where will you connect it to? Which one? The green one. Because you want to hear something. If you have small PC speakers and you want to connect it to your computer to hear let's say the video you are playing let's say you are watching a movie and you want to hear the sound well through speakers you have some pc speakers you place the pc speakers next to your computer where will you connect the pin you connect it through the green one so this particular green port is for speaker out anytime you want to hear sound don't connect it to any of them you will not hear any sound do you see this this is connect this is connecting to our main speaker so this one if i want to connect it to a computer i need to plug it here if i plug it here nothing will happen we will not get any sound first of all this is not a microphone it's a speaker so when i connect it to the mic port i've i've, I've pulled the case we won't hear anything at all so to hear something i'll have to connect it to the speaker port. that's the audio output port. is that okay sometimes it's called a line out or headphone port all right there is a third one that is always blue the blue one is called 
the line in it's called what hello please I said the blue one is called what the line in is also an input port but it is not used to connect to microphones but connect is, is used to connect to other devices other devices that can send audio into a computer for example if you have a guitar that you are playing and you want the audio to go into a computer you connect a cable from your guitar to the line in port and it will go in if you have a keyboard that you are playing music and you want the audio to go into your computer you connect to the line in the last time I used line in I actually I wanted to get record a, a, a radio a radio there was something happening on the radio station and I wanted to record the sound now I didn't want to play the the radio out and use my microphone to capture the sound outside because when I do that all the sound from people talking was also going so I wanted the sound directly from the radio station so I connected to the radio and I connected to the line in now when I did that connection the radio became muted but all the audio was going into the computer and I recorded it and what happened was that the, the sound we got was 100% quality I see this directly from the radio station and all the noise from outside didn't go in so from one device to another device if you want an input audio input from a device then you use a line in port is that okay all right let's read what is here audio ports and connectors the function of an audio port is to transmit the sound produced by the computer to an external audio output device such as a speaker or headphone an audio port of a computer works with a sound card where the quality of the sound output depends on the quality of the sound card there are usually three audio ports or jacks available on computers which are differentiated by color codes or icons we have one color that is lime green the lime green is always for the speaker so if you want the icon you see an icon like this so usually when you check any laptop or anything and you are looking for the speaker sometimes you use this icon to tell if you see a headphone it means a speaker out can you see this icon if you see this it means it is speaker audio out all right it is called line out speaker out or headphone it allows external speakers headphones and other audio output devices to be connected to the computer transferring computer generated audio to the devices so that it can be heard so this is for speaker that is the green one the green lime green let's talk about the pink one the pink has this icon so if you don't see color pink you see this icon there are some laptops that you will not see the colors if you don't see the colors you use this and that to tell sometimes in front of the computer case in front of the case you are going to get two ports just two but these two ports you see the icons on them you will not see any color but you can see the icons so i can see the icon here i can see my headphone and i can see my microphone so there are only two so if i want to hear speaker i'll connect it to here if i want to hear sound if i want to do a recording i'll connect it here it's the same as what we have behind just that here they provided two and there are no colors so i have to use the icons to tell is that okay on most laptops this is what you do you will not see any color and sometimes you have two on laptops 
so you have to use the icons to tell all right this particular one here microphone cord is plugged in for audio recording or input so this is for audio recording then the light blue one line in enables connections to external devices such as audio mixers and musical instruments they are used to record play or modify incoming audio the blue one here is called what line in this is an icon the pink one is called it's called what the microphone or the mic port and the light green one is called what okay line out or speak out all right so this is for audio i'm sure you understand audio ports now okay so next we have the ps2 ports and connector ps2 port is a type of classic port which is often found on desktop computers to connect the keyboard and mouse the shape of its connector is round with six pins the ps2 port is very rarely used nowadays given that the usb port has dominated the current computer device connections so before usb came these two were our famous keyboard and mouse ports the green one is for mouse so you see the icon here the purple one is for keyboard you see the icon here whether you see the icon or not the colors are very distinct you cannot even if you don't see the icons you have to bring your mouse in the green port and your keyboard into the purple port you have to bring your mouse here and your keyboard here so this one here is coming from the mouse and this is coming from the keyboard so you can use the colors to tell so this is called a ps2 six pin mini din connector we just call it ps2 it's popularly known as ps2 ps2 i don't think we'll ever use it again we used to use ps2 a lot i don't think we will ever use ps2 again because of usb i don't think we'll ever use it but you should still know it and you should still have it in mind all right so that is it this is for mouse and this is for keyboard whenever you see this use the colors to tell the difference the green is for mouse and the purple is for keyboard and it's called a ps2 connector so in any examination when you hear ps2 ps2 refers to both of them it doesn't mean one is ps1 and one is ps2 no when you say ps2 we are talking about this two the two of them or this type of connector is a ps2 so that is ps2 this is how it looks like on the mouse sometimes you hear the six pin ps2 or the six pin mini din ps2 please have you heard that modern computers will not have the ps2 because ps2 has been discontinued it's no longer being made let's talk about the parallel ports parallel ports are widely used to connect a computer to a set of parallel printers zip drives and external hard drives this type of port uses a 25 pin connector the use of the parallel port is quite rare as it, it is less practical compared to a usb port so because of usb we no longer use a parallel let's look at the serial port serial port this type of computer port is a typical port that works to connect a keyboard mouse or a plc that is programmable logic controller most of this most of the serial ports use a type of rs232c connector with a set of pins between 9 and 25 serial ports are rarely used today given that most of the computers of today use standard usb connections 
so in the past serial ports could connect to keyboards could connect to mouse and could connect to certain devices even printers and other older devices all right today no one is using the serial port let's look at another port that is also out of the system because of usb we had a very popular port called the firewire port the port was called what i didn't say bagger wire fire wire i didn't say firewall i didn't say fireworks i said fire wire so we had fire wire cables and most of the time these fire wire cables were used with cameras fire wire also called ieee 1394 is another popular connector for adding peripherals to your computer Firewire is mostly used to connect digital camcorders, external hard drives, and other devices that can benefit from high transfer rates of up to 480 megabits per second. Today we don't use Firewire that much. You may find an older camcorder that still uses Firewire, but today this is no longer popular. This used to be very, very popular so this brings us to the end of lesson seven next time we'll move to lesson eight and we'll learn a whole lot about the computer keyboard that you never knew existed if you think you know about computer keyboard forget it you don't know about keyboard yet there's a whole lot of functions in the keyboard you've not even begun to imagine so we'll be looking at the keyboard and other components and we have a whole lot to learn to get you prepared for higher education and advancement in computer technology for your careers and your businesses and the future so without much ado i want to thank you for joining us in this class we have learned so much. We've learned about the computer ports and connectors. We've also learned about the hardware components and we have a lot more to learn. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe to this channel. If you have any question, leave it in the comment box below and I will answer you. Like this video and share with your friends and I will see you in the next video. Bye.